Hey guys, this is Gatsby with Tape, and today you join me for episode 25 of Solar Civilization, and we're doing a little bit of station keeping on the Prospector. I have this very old space shuttle sitting here, which I kind of need to return home. I haven't, re I've kind of neglected this space station a bit. I haven't put much on it, and I've kind of been leaving um, some things. Uh, kind of, I've left the shuttle up here. I left Bill Kerman up here, so Bill Kerman didn't get to go to, um, didn't get to go to Eve which I feel bad, and Luke Kerman's on board. But um, I have lots of things coming up that they will be needed for. Obviously, Luke Kerman, very experienced. And I had this annoying um, ladder problem, as I always do with B9 cockpits. But anyway, this is quite an old space shuttle, and I think it's quite prone to glitching, as you may or may not see. Yeah, Bill Kerman and Luke Kerman. Um, kind of wish I'd uh, sent Bill Kerman to uh, to Eve, but I didn't. I, I completely forgot about the space shuttle on the station. Um, I know we'll be doing a crew rotation. This is actually quite centralized. This kind of episode is quite a lot of station keeping, actually. Um, but I do do some other cool stuff, if I remember rightly. Um, yeah, this is... I think I took this up here quite a while ago just to put that docking adapter on for the shuttles. And this is the only shuttle that ever went to the space station because... Um, well, I'm thinking of shutting down the shuttle program to make way for SSTOs and things. Um, I might do a few more launches, but probably not to the station, so I put that docking adapter on there for not, really. Um, it's probably not going to do anything. And this doesn't have those nice RCS engines, so I'm having to use the thrusters to deorbit, which is very annoying. Um, but I'm not sure. I might keep doing the shuttle program, just because I like it, really. I quite like the idea of shuttles, but it, it does need to move on to things like SSTOs, um, stuff like that. Um, uh, so maybe I want. I have some ideas for less conventional SSTOs, like not so much planes, but um, uh, I'm not really sure. You can do lots of easy SSTOs in normal KSB, especially with ferrum aerospace, because thin atmosphere, more delta V, yeah, yay. Um, so yeah, this is gonna hopefully be a fairly standard return. Um, I've just put my, you know, periaps where it should be. I've left most of this at four times time accelerate because I've got a lot to fit in this episode, and um, this is fairly standard. I've done it lots of times, um, and uh, I, I slow it down for the important bits. So yeah, just retract these solar panels because we don't need um, energy generation in the atmosphere, and we don't want them to break off. Mm. Having problem enunciating for some reason. It should be better. Anyway, um, I'm getting some weird glitching where when I, the uh, my control surfaces do a different thing to my um, torque and my RCS. So I've actually turned the torque off, I believe. Um, or maybe not. Um, I'm not entirely sure. But anyway, so it makes it kind of impossible to fly, um, which is good. And you can't, I've slowed it down now because you start to see I'm losing control quite badly. Um, and because I, I really need to switch off RCS, it is very hard to keep this under control because if you push one way, it spins the other, so it's it's actually really hard to do that intuitively. It's you think you get used to it, but it wouldn't, and then it and it's <coughs> unstable anyway. What could that possibly be? Um. Oh my god! I did, uh, Facebook is ah. Uh, I'm sorry. My uh, I'll stop talking about that. But um, my phone vibrated even though I have it open in a window on my computer just so it won't vibrate on the phone. Anyway, you can see I'm seriously losing control. Um and it's spinning out, and I'm not burning up somehow, but I can punch out as long as it doesn't burn up the um, thing inside the cargo bay. But yeah, this is annoying. This is one of the reasons I redesigned it, because I did have these problems with it once before. Um, so, you know, that's quite difficult. And um, it is just very annoying if you uh, lose your shuttles, because the point is that they're fairly reusable. Anyway, I split it up again, because it does just a lot more twirling. Um, I use the air brakes, and I do bring it under relative control, because I want it to be controlled when I punch out. Um, I've decided not to even try to land this, because it's too unstable, and even if I can bring it stable, I don't think I have the in intuition to um, translate the... To, to swap the buttons. And you can see down there is my first shuttle crash. Space shuttle, it was, that was the first space shuttle that crashed, and this one's about to crash in the same place. Luckily, this isn't my nice, new, shiny one, it's just an old one. Um, and it would be probably best because I'm not going to use this again. Anyway, now it's no longer burning up. I should probably punch out. So let's do that. Um, I lose the wings and then that shoots past me and almost hits me. But I have the Vanguard abort system so I can just parachute down to the floor. Um, and hope that those parachutes open up. So that's kind of annoying. I keep losing those shuttles. 
Uh, but the new one's pretty perfect, like the one with the inline RC, the inline SAS. I think I'm not sure what that glitch was. I think when you attach it to a station, it just glitches out anyway. I've had that problem before, so I probably won't be doing any station keeping with it. Um, anyway, slam into the ground because those um, didn't open properly. But whatever. Um, anyway, we should probably um, go back to the space center and do other things. Oh yeah, I need to recover the other Kerbal um, because. You know, we don't want him dead. So they're alive, so we didn't have to worry too much. Um, anyway, now another um, upper stage reusability test, which I have been doing a few of. This is a better rig for um, landing legs. I'm now using... Um, I think I was using two engines before, wasn't I? I don't know. What was I... Um, yeah, this is... Well, I'm not sure what my old design for this was, but basically it's using um, uh, these two engines on the outside and then on... In the middle is just a couple of, well, four little landing struts. Um, I've forgotten what my previous design for reusing the top stage was, but this is better in some ways. Um, and I'm planning to package all of this on the underside, so well, you'll see more of it later, and I'll talk about it later. I'm in future rockets, not in this episode, but I want to package all like the control stuff, all the batteries underneath um, where the engines are, so that I can re-enter, possibly with a heat shield, um, like uh, fuel tanks first so it doesn't burn up because that can be a problem I hear um, but yeah I'm just flying it around a bit testing how easy it is to fly and how well it flies and it will be easier than this because there'll be less fuel in it when it lands and then it falls over and then it breaks and that costs lots of money so that's bad um, but still it was a good test and we got those engines back anyway just a little bit of um, low earth or low carbon orbit um, you know kind of maintenance I'm just gonna deorbit this uh, Morpheus Five Pro. I'm I'm doing this is more of a maintenance episode than anything else, but I do do some cool stuff. Um, oh, actually, quite a lot of cool stuff in the next episode. <laughs> but this one's, you know, I try to land this. I think. Um, I hope I've sped. Yeah, I, no, I don't think I have sped this up, but uh, it was just fairly standard, just kind of returning. And I did try to land it a bit. It, this is the um, service module, service and science module from my last lunar landing, moon landing. God damn it, I prefer saying lunar, it sounds so much cooler. Um, but yeah, so I detached this, and because physics loaded out for it, um, it didn't actually deorbit like I'd hoped, which isn't great. But um, yeah, I thought I'd just uh, leave this in, because I do like to do these kind of things. Um, there is another weird orbit out there, that's the first Keithane satellite I, went, I sent to Minmus. Um, I should be setting up. I've been. I've got lots of plans for moon bases, but I need bigger parts. I just need. I need to do more science until I can set up my moon base. I need three point five meter fairings, um, just because of convenience. But I, yeah, as I say, I have lots of plans for a moon base and another space station, which is in the main hmm, one. One of the episodes. I don't know. Um, I, I, yeah, I have a plan for a fuel station. Um, which might be in this episode. I, I edited this not two hours ago, but I've completely forgotten what's in it. So um, we're just going kind of by ear. Um, anyway, we're now below Mark 1, and it's all getting nice and stable. And I the only control I have is a gimbling engine. Um, but luckily, because it's a service and science module, it has batteries on it, so I won't run out of electric charge while deorbiting. Um, uh, but yeah, we're just bringing it down quite nicely. And just want to kind of... Well, because we're landing on water, you want to be going very slowly, and I do want to reuse this. Just as it's just a nice um, practice for reusing upper stages, really. Um, and that poodle engine gives kind of not too much thrust, which is quite nice because most of my upper stages are very powerful because they're pushing like quite a lot into orbit. But because this is a service module, um, it's not too powerful. And I'm just trying to slow down as much as possible without losing control. And um, then touch down quite breakily, and I break everything. But still, it was a nice practice and a nice test, and it was mainly just to burn it. Anyway, this is my new, um, um, this is a, actually quite an interesting vehicle. This is my new vehicle for servicing the um, space station, the Prospector, and for doing other things. Um, servicing basically everything in low Earth orbit. Um, I'll explain it, ex low carbon orbit, god damn it. Um, it launches on the Triton 1. Um, which is my first reusable rocket because it's only about 15 tons and it has an abort system because I want to keep my Kerbal safe. Um, this is just a standard crew rotation on the uh, Prospector station. It carries um, lots of life support um, and it can... The, the idea is that this will be my um, vehicle for doing all servicing in low carbon orbit, so or high carbon orbit, or the moon, or Minmus. Basically, um, 
it's made so that I can just strap a slightly bigger fuel tank on on it, um, and it'll all no matter how big the fuel tank is, I'm pretty sure um, it'll still be able to launch enough Triton One because the fuel doesn't weigh that much. I'm not sure, but I do have the Triton Two, if not, which is my other reusable rocket, the one that takes more to orbit. Which maybe in this episode, I'm not entirely sure. Um, I've kind of it's quite late, so I've forgotten everything. Um, but yeah, the idea is that if I have any stations or anything, this can service them. Anyway, as usual, we need to try to reuse this stage. Um, I get a decent success rate. Um, like, not 100%, but above 50%, I'd say, these days. It's more like 70% success rate. Maybe not recently, but you know. Um, and I have the parachutes, and um, if this goes all horribly wrong... Um, so yeah, I've punched in minus 20, because that's the slowing down velocity I tend to use. I forgot how powerful this rocket was, so I wasted most of my fuel. I pull the chutes anyway, because I get very jittery. And then land it and recover it, kind of, before it tips over, because... But yeah, there we go. Anyway, now we need to go back to the, um, the vehicle in orbit, which is my Team of Mark II multi-purpose vehicle. Basically just for servicing things, as, I, as, I, as I've said. Yeah, this is the vehicle. Um, I can, you can see the small fuel tank. I can strap on a bigger one if I need to. Um, if I'm doing something around, say, the moon or Minmus. Um, so yeah, and as I expand my bases around the Kerbin system, it will be nice to have a vehicle like this, just for general purpose. Um, so yeah, now it's just a matter of rendezvousing with the space station. I haven't launched in a brilliant position because I was expecting to be able to go right to it, whereas because it was, um, because I had to go back and reuse the rocket, I couldn't. Um, but still, we just do a quick well, quite a big burn, but this has so much fuel it doesn't really matter. I think this one can actually do a flyby of the moon. Um, bigger fuel tank, it could get to the moon. And if there's a fueling base at the moon, it could just refuel there, so I wouldn't have to have too much um, excess delta V. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm making lots of technologies for um, make it, for making bases right now, because I can't... because basically... I need some bigger rockets to actually make a keythane base, um, because my keythane, my ideas for keythane landers are quite big. But I'm thinking of making some smaller ones so I can just do it quite quickly. But I do need to get some science, really, just to be putting bases places, because I am a bit limited on parts still. Um, it's not brilliantly apparent right now, um, but the solar panels are laid out in a very Orion-type way, where they're kind of... <clears throat> you can see, if you've ever seen the Orion spacecraft, um, you'll know what I'm talking about, the way there's kind of like two on each side, and I just quite like how that looks, rather than kind of with four times symmetry, looks just kind of a bit boring. Anyway, we're now approaching Prospector. You can see that old, another very old spaceship, which is, um, I think this still has its original crew, um, maybe minus Bill Kerman, um, but uh, yeah. So this is my first crew rotation. I have kind of neglected the space station a bit, um, but I have bigger plans, and it never really, did anything because with Interstellar you can get a lab that does research but this can't really research and I had some ideas for I actually still have some ideas for probe missions that will um, rendezvous with this rather than returning and then the, the science can be taken back down or transmitted with the um, help of that science lab so I don't know I still have ideas for using this because um, but basically the idea is it's just a small research station <clears throat> Sorry, I have a terrible cough. Um, yeah, but you, I, quite like, um, I quite like how much bigger the um, other spacecraft looks than the old one, just with the big service module. Um, but yeah, hopefully this will help with the um, task of, um, you know, maintenance in low carbon orbit. Um, yeah, that's everyone transferred across. I guess it's time to leave. Notice there are no parachutes on this spacecraft. I didn't. Um... So, yeah, and that's a shame, because Ronnie Cummins on board. Um, but, yeah, we should probably just move to our deorbit burn. Well, we probably shouldn't, but I didn't know any better. Um, I didn't think about that when I was building the spacecraft. Uh, so, yeah. Um, and I was already in the atmosphere when I realised. Um, and it was kind of... And I detached the service module, which I could have used to land. God, this was a bad idea. Yeah, um, so basically I forgot to put parachutes on this when I built the station, because it was kind of an afterthought. Um, so, these guys are kind of doomed, and because there's nothing underneath them to, um, so, like, take their impact if they land on land, it's just, yeah, it doesn't look good for them. 
Um, but they don't burn up, so that's good. Oh, and I switched to the debris. I like to see all the debris in low carbon orbit. It's nice. It's just, I, I quite like it. Um, I like seeing all the debris and thinking about Kessler syndrome and maybe one day some of it will take out a station. That'd be very cool. Um, I should do a video about um, debris taking out stations. I try to use the RCS kind of futilely, then try to save Ronnie, but I jump out too soon. Um, oh god, it hasn't happened. But yeah, I jump out too soon, and then we both hit the ground, and nothing survives. So we'll have... I should really have a plant of flags somewhere for all the Kerbals I've lost, because there have been a few now. Um, because I tend to try, I try to make as many survivors as possible, but with all my plane crashes and forgetting to put parachutes on things and all that, it's kind of hard. Um, but yeah, so um, we just need to deorbit this. Um, this is the upper stage of the vehicle that we just launched. Uh, I want this to be fully reusable, so I'm hopefully going to land this. However, I forgot to put batteries on it, so it is going to be incredibly difficult. And it looks like we're coming down on water, so yeah, not a great mission, really. Um, lost three Kerbals, um, freaking, uh, probably gonna have difficulty landing this, but I keep igniting the engine because it doesn't have a reaction wheel either. This is just kind of a concept more than a actual useful design. So we, I'm having to, and then we lose landing leg structure anyway. That's why I want to come in backwards from now on because, um, the landing leg structure is very kind of heat on resistance. So it just kind of burns off, um, and throws my center of mass out. Um, so that's a problem. So I want to come in backwards, um, and so I can mount a heat shield or something. Um, but yeah, I have done quite a, a lot of this has been centered on reusing rockets because I believe, like Elon Musk believes, that um, well, I probably believe because Elon Musk believes that um, to be truly an interplanetary species, you have to um, you know, have um, reusable rockets. Oh, I do touch down quite nicely. Perfect. I do lose the landing thing, but that was nice. Anyway, the final bit of the episode is um. I noticed that my Keythane satellite is gone, and what happened is I forgot that because Ike changes um, altitude as it orbits, sometimes stuff gets pulled into its sphere of influence, so my Keythane satellite slammed into the surface of Ike when I wasn't watching, and luckily for me, um, the Duna Explorer didn't, because that would be really bad. So I am just doing a quick little burn to get me out of the um, potential sphere of influence of um, Ike, because we really don't want to hit Ike. Um, because that means death, or be flung out into interplanetary space, especially because Jebediah Kerman is now on the surface, um, and he needs to do a few things. Um, but yeah, so I'm just going to do a quick little um, 11 meter per second burn to get me um, lower in uh, uh, lower in my orbit. Um, and I do need to go to Ike. I think it'll just be a flyby mission or orbital mission, but I can get a bit more science from there. Oh, my god. Um, I, I, I uh, keep, my phone keeps vibrating even though I have all, everything muted. Anyway, um, yeah. So that's the deorbit burn, not deorbit, the, um, bringing my apogee down. Well, ap apodoon, wouldn't it be? Um, yeah. So now I won't slam into Ike, which is pretty, pretty good. And I do a quick test. I click through about 30 orbits to make sure I don't slam into Ike because that would be horrible and bad. Um, but yeah, so I, I do keep checking. I got very paranoid about this because I was very scared that I'd lose the spacecraft. Um, but yeah, I believe that we're drawing near to the end of the episode, and it looks like I'm not going to hit Ike. So uh, I think it's time for me to say uh, this has been Chaos Paper Tape. I will see you next time.